Hello everyone, I'm Sam Clift and in this coloured pencil tip video I'm going to be showing you how I drew this duckling in coloured pencil and I'm actually going to be using something called polydraw which is like a type of drafting film and it's really interesting because the texture is very different, you have to change your technique slightly as in that you can't add as many layers as you could do with some of the other regular papers but the great thing about it is that the slice tool works brilliantly with it or exacto knife or craft knife or anything like that so that you can pull up any fine hairs or any detail that you could put light hairs or feathers in this case over dark which is a really great thing to be able to do so I really hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'm beginning as I usually do with any drawing and that's the eye because I do think that it gives the drawing life so I'm starting with the dark sepia and I'm just mapping in leaving out the highlights or anything that I feel that will add a little bit of detail in this really tiny area and then I'm starting to go in with some light colours that I can see so I'm using actually a Caran d'Ache cream colour to just go around some of the lightest parts, the fluffy fur. Don't forget we are using drafting film so you don't have the ability to add as many layers as you would normally do. Building up through the browns now into the ochres and just using the kind of fur technique, so little tiny lines going in the direction of the feathers and starting to darken up into the walnut brown, uh, using the Van Dyke brown as well, the nugget and the bista. And I'm just building up through the browns, adding just the different colours as I go, because I really want to give depth to this drawing. I don't want it to just be one colour. There's lots of highlights within these feathers. There's light shining on from the top of the head. And I'm starting to just build up those colours slowly, using all of the different browns in the polychromos. I'm also using the ochres and blending in between with the cream Caran d'Ache. So using a very light hand here, just going in with the cocoa of the Pablo just to add a little bit of shadow, a little bit of detail. I have to be mindful that I can't add too many layers, so I'm now darkening up with the dark sepia polychromos. You can see it's darkening up nicely now, going into the shadows and working out where the darkest parts are, all around the beak and to the left of the eye as well. You can see it's starting to blend now. Drafting film isn't as grainy as any other paper, but it does have a texture to it that some people find a little bit difficult. So it might take a bit of getting used to, but it's just working with its strengths. So you haven't got the same graininess, but you can still add layers and the slice tool works brilliantly with this. The erasers don't work as well but there's always pros and cons to everything. Starting to build up the layers now, you can still see that it adds, you can add quite a few layers to this drafting film. I've had, I'm adding lots of different colours through the ochres and through the browns. Starting to just think about the detail of the eye, getting the shape right and adding the darkness around it so that it all starts to come together. Making sure you're adding a little bit of darkness to the lighter parts as well, just to pull it all together. Otherwise, it tends to look quite stripy and not very cohesive. Adding a little bit of detail around the eye and you can see how the slice tool just picks it up perfectly with the drafting film and basically gets back to the uh, clear drafting film underneath. So you can really add lots of detail. Going in with the cold grey one onto the beak area, adding a little bit of the ochres and the umbers, the yellow, there's a little bit of yellow around the middle of the beak and orange too, blending with the cold grey too and then just adding a little bit of detail with the black making sure that I'm being careful where to put this because it would be a little bit more difficult to lift up although you could scratch it away with the slice tool. Just going in with the cold grey four and adding all of the different kind of nuances of colour around the beak. It's not completely black, it's not completely grey, there are lots of different colours that make up this beak area. Darkening up with the cold grey six and then adding black where I need to just to the darkest parts. Sometimes it just is black. There are no other colours that will make it up. So going in with the black, it really does make it pop and you do have to go in as dark as it needs to go in certain areas. Just blending with the cold grey too 
and then just thinking about any details in the eye with the slice tool. So it all kind of makes sense. You can add fur detail with the slice tool and you can get the kind of light fur or feathers over dark with this technique as well, which is really great for flyaway hairs to make it look a lot more realistic. I'm just going in with some detail with the nugget now. And in with the browns, the bisters, the nugget, just darkening up under the eye. Adding a little bit more with the ochres, just blending those pencil strokes and in with the ivory of the polychromos, just to soften the pencil strokes. I'm going in with the Van Dyke Brown, making sure that the edges are really fluffy and this cocoa in the Pablos is a fantastic neutral shadow colour. Darkening up under the chin so that starts to make sense. I'm going in with the dark sepia to really darken it up and the warm grey too. So that's the warm grey six, the dark sepia, adding little tiny pencil strokes and just darkening up the beak, pulling up any details that I need to do, any highlights around the beak. And just sharpening up any edges. This is a more of a smooth leathery texture than the fur. So this needs to be quite crisp. We don't want the graininess around the edges. Going in with the cold grey five. A little bit of detail around the edge of the beak. And then blending any graininess away with a light colour Caran d'Ache. I like to darken up with the dark sepia just to balance the shadows a little bit and then adding or taking away with the slice tool just where that highlighted area is at the top of the head and then balancing out the shadows under the chin as well. Adding a little bit of shadow with the nugget, darkening up around the eye with the dark sepia. And you can see it's starting to create much more of a kind of in-depth, fluffy feather texture. Starting to work down into the body now, going in with the nugget to begin with and adding the feather texture. Going in with the bister and building up through those browns. Making sure I'm making it look quite fluffy towards the edge. Just adding a base layer of cream, going back in with the Bista. You can see it's starting to build up and starting to look really fluffy. The Nugget is just a fantastic mid-brown, very natural colour and perfect for this duckling. Going in with the Ivory again. And adding some more umber into the Van Dyke brown, so darkening up. Really light hand following the direction of the feathers and then going over the same area a couple of times if you want to darken up. I'm not pressing any harder. Don't forget we need to really think about where the layers with this drafting film. You can't add as many. There is a limit to it. Much more limited than the smooth paper that I generally use. But it's great for making your drawings pop and I would definitely recommend having a go with the drafting film. Uh, for kind of fur texture and using the slice tool for the fluffy flyaway hairs and laying light over dark, which you can't generally do with colour pencil very easily. Darkening up with the dark sepia and with the nugget. This section of the tummy was really quite light, so going in with the ivory and then just following the reference photo, following the direction of the feathers and just mapping it in, working my way up through the browns again and in the brown ochre, the Van Dyke brown and all of the yellow ochres as well. Darkening up with the dark sepia. Really starting to build up through the layers. Darkening up where the shadows need to be under the little wings and under the tummy as well. Adding some of the darker to the light areas just to make it all come together, make it look much more cohesive and less stripy. Just blending the pencils with the warm grey. 
and then just adjusting the shadows, making sure the values are correct. Really darkening up some areas, going in with that cocoa of Pablo pencil. And the dark sepia is always a great natural shadow colour. Still using a light hand. And then just blending the transition between the lightest area and the shadow underneath. So it looks kind of curved. You can see it's starting to take on a little bit of form now. It still needs to go a little bit darker in some areas. The darkest parts are underneath where the kind of bottom is touching the ground. So that's the darkest part. No light is coming in. And so once you've got that part in, you can see that you need to darken up other areas like around the neck and just blend some of the pencil so it's a little bit softer, looks a little bit fluffier. And then adding the dark sepia underneath just to balance that. It's glazing so you're not losing any detail underneath. You're just adding a layer of darker for the shadows. Using the slice tool to lift up some of the lighter hairs over the, or feathers should I say, over the dark. Fantastic on drafting film get a little bit carried away it's just so much fun I'm just lightening up the shadow because there are some lighter hairs within that shadow and then starting to think about the feet so using the cold gray six and mapping in where you know, the shapes are the little toes blending with the cold grays adding a little bit of the yellow and building up through the browns making sure we don't leave out those lightest parts where the sun or the light is catching because the black the feet are quite black they're quite dark gray but we don't want to miss out all of those details and little bits of highlight so just mapping those in and then we can darken up everything around it so it all starts to make sense going in with the black for the last thing adding the little toes darkening up the shadow of the highlights so they look a little bit more in place and then we can lift up any highlights with the slice tool Look how well that works. Just adding a little bit more of the yellow ochres in. And then we use that exact te technique with the other foot and then adding a little bit of shadow. You can see the graininess of the paper here, that texture. So using a very, very light hand, just going in with the cold gray for the first layer and then darkening up the nearer to the duckling's bottom and legs is gonna be a lot darker. So just going in with the cold grays adding some darker to certain areas just to make it look a lot more realistic. And then I'm going in with the colourless blender of the Caran d'Ache to just get rid of any texture, any graininess. Not completely, but it smooths it out nicely. Just some finishing touches, adding that fluffy fur to the neck and the top of the head, just to tie it all in together. Adding the different browns and make sure that you've got all of those different colours darkening up where it needs to go. Just the finishing darkness under the belly as well, making sure it all comes together. And into the chest, using that dark sepia again, pulling it into the lightest parts to bring it all together with the warm greys. The final touches. And there's the finished duckling. I really hope you enjoyed this video and got some helpful tips on how to render feathers on drafting film. If you'd like to see this tutorial in full, then I do have it available in my online membership, Discovering the Artist Within You. I will put the link below in the description box so that you can have a look at all that's on offer within the membership. And you can also take a free coloured pencil drawing tutorial of an apple if you wanted to have a go and see the kind of thing that will be available within the membership. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.